or find us on X, Instagram, and the rest of the platforms at Y254 channel. This is the first and also the last conversation of the day. So we're inviting you on our hashtag to let us know where you're watching us from. But before we do anything, there's a question we've asked you, an interesting one. In the spirit of Gen Z revolution, we are asking you, where ufanya nini ndio ufogivu mtu kusaliti? And by that, I, you know what I mean, right? There's that song that says, Magi Magi, come on, you basi sayume nino. If you know now, you know. Anyways, some of the feedback on that is, uh, somebody says, good morning from Umias, show you kojutu sana. Uh, nasema, nakasirikanga siyongei na wewe forever. Anajita Mumias ke im. <laughs> Another one is, uh, anito Augustine Rabbit, anasema, watching live from Shikumu. Uh, Kennedy Jumba Asirigo, anasema, watching live from Lekwiani. I'm trying to find, yes, there's another one here. And it was Dennis Nyongesa, anasema, nikiwa na muesi in Bungoma County, niko live kwenye madam tu, kama huyu wakuna aja kupigana na ye, na ukitaka kujua anayokuwazia dui, usimpige ngumi. Msongeshe awe karibu kabisa, na wewe, ndo utamwelewa vizuri, anayafikiria. Okay, that's a lot of wisdom there. But uh, that is part of the conversation, so I'm inviting you on that hashtag still to let us know where you're watching us from. As we banter, I've got my guests who are live with me right here in the studio. And uh, immediately seated next to me on my right is uh, Vincent Orlando. He is also a political, a political science student, I believe, from the University of Nairobi. And then next to him is Isaac Newton. He's also a political science student. Karibu sana, Orlando and uh, Isaac. So maybe to let's break down go to what happened over last week and then we can get into the band of <laughs> maybe let me start with you Orlando since you're next to me uh, what you saw that transpired last week on Tuesday is there anything maybe that you picked uh, now that you know you are studying you know this you guys in Melinda the next advices of the next government probably or even this one you never know miracle something yeah so from what transpired on Tuesday last week, do you feel like maybe your voice individually has been heard? Or maybe the, we need to pump in more gas <laughs> in terms of advocacy? And uh, off the air, I've showed you there's a hashtag called AkujaX. It means that you know, Gen Zs and young people like you and I are taking this revolution online to spearhead for change and they're pushing, they're inserting pressure. Pressure is a thousand percent. So from what transpired last week, uh, did you? Feel hard. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Uh, first of all, before I talk of what uh, the things that I picked last last week from the demos that have been ongoing, uh, did you attend the demos as well? I did one. Okay. Yeah. Before I speak uh, about what I picked last week, uh, what I want to put on table is that. Uh, Sai serikali imetambua kwamba vijana wako and uh, their voice matters a lot uh -huh. and uh, it is something that uh, can't be take uh, just taken uh, like that uh -huh. so what i can say is that uh, most of us most of youth the political class and uh, those who are uh, ruling currently mm -hmm. are not taking us serious but uh, from what happened last week it, it can it is clearly seen that uh, youth have voice mm -hmm. yeah so aside from that also I need to, I want also to pass my condolences to those who passed away yeah. during the protest especially yeah. the youth Mm -hmm. Those who are there to fight for what is right. Mm. Yeah, so I, my condolences to the family uh -huh. and all people that uh, passed away during that the demonstrations. Moment. Yes. Okay. Uh, Newton, um, what did you notice from the observation from the demonstration and protest? First of all, did you attend any? No, I didn't. Uh -huh. I didn't attend, but I was. I was almost. You're yeah, almost. And yeah, the I was Holy almost. I the was Holy Spirit ministered to you because I'm okay and how rude you are. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was in town. Yeah. I, I, I witnessed everything that happened, though I did not participate, but mm -hmm. I was there witnessing everything that was happening. Yeah. Yeah. All I can say is it all started in good faith. 
yeah. the Gen Z started it all in good faith. Mm -hmm. They meant well for the country. Mm. Yeah. And the president also, after seeing what was happening, he mm. noticed there's something wrong and he toned down and was ready to have a conversation with everyone, of which that's a good thing. Constitutionally, mm. it's also nice because you can demonstrate knowing that the president will 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 see whatever mm -hmm. your, your grievances are mm -hmm. and is ready to come down and have a conversation with you it's yeah. a nice thing it's a nice thing so it's not all going in vain mm -hmm. like you're there on the road then it's all going in vain so it's yeah. a nice thing Mm. It's a nice thing, as uh, long as nice. it's peaceful. It's the peaceful, okay. Yeah. Uh, Orlando, from what has transpired, there's been a lot of abductions. Uh, there's, she's, he's LSK, LSK student leader, I believe. Uh, yeah, one of those from schools. Karen. Yeah, he was abducted and uh, he was found in Muranga. Uh, the reports say he looked drugged and he's disheveled, like he's not mentally okay. okay. And uh, when it comes to, you know, these things that are building up right now, tomorrow you guys, you guys, uh, the Gen Z's are heading back to the street. And it, 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 lo it looks like you guys are not backing down. You know, the pressure is being mounted so high. It seems like the anger and the rage. And uh, dubbing from what happened yesterday, uh, the interview that the president had with the convergence with the three trio, uh, it seems like from what was going live on X, I was seeing everything. Like it was from a 10 to a thousand really fast. It's like it triggered a lot of anger and emotion. So do you feel like after some time, you guys are going to, you know, go down? Because eh, so, there's even a hashtag as well in a to Akuja space where they're saying, come, we talk on X, but we're not meeting in person. Remember those, um, a rollout, I think it's called the National something uh, forum where the president invited uh, Gen Z's to nominate a leader who can represent them. And there was a res counter response to that, Ikasema, request denied. Kuja to X, Kwenye Atutaki could nominate him too, because once they're nominated, they'll be compromised with a pair of sitting allowance. And they don't want that culture of nominating somebody when they don't want to compromise and they start doing their own thing. So uh, from that, do you feel like you guys will get a voice? Or ama kuje to X, aongeleshe kama anonymously, when you ongea onge, but at the end of the day, I'm takikuwa na leader. Because umesema, it's leaderless, faceless, tribeless, polit not politically affiliated with any party. Thank you, Brian, for the question. First of all, I want to begin by sharing with you that uh, Gen Z, uh, in quote, but uh, I want to address the youth in general. Mm -hmm. that uh, we do not have a leader. Mm -hmm. The Gen Z uh, that came up with this movement mm -hmm. have, have no leader. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can say for, 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 uh, from my own view is that uh, government mm -hmm. should uh, stop Vipindi, Nastori okay. Rajaba, to the youth. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. I think uh, when uh, that happens, uh, youth will retaliate okay. and uh, let things go down. Because uh, so long as we still have tension, or the government is still in the other side, that it doesn't want to give youth opportunity to hear, hear out their views, mm. it, will, it, will, it will become very troublesome uh -huh. yeah, to cool down the youths. Mm. Yeah, and again, what I need to also... Moram taki leader. We don't want leader. It is, it is something that is... It, it, it's affecting you also, Brian. Mm -hmm. you. The finance bill is also affecting you. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the reason why we don't want leader is because mm -hmm. uh, this issue, it is not structural. It is something that affects the general population of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, uh, when, when, when we bring... Le le leadership in this kind of uh, conversation mm -hmm. that is where you find the these things of abductions happening okay uh, that that is why it is very much critical for us to elect a leader to all leaders to represent us mm -hmm. yeah, so we ha we are going there as youth and uh, no one we need we need no leader to represent us okay uh, we are one thing one voice one nation 
Mm. But yes. I believe for any revolution, anyways, before we get back to the question, yeah, <laughs> I believe for any revolution needs a leader, anyways. But, uh, but I, I believe after some time, eventually, after the rage and the anger has calmed down, we have eventually you guys will select somebody. But let me hear uh, Newton's uh, sentiments on that one. Uh, do you guys need a leader? Am I don't want a leader? And why not? I really think at the end of it all, for any meaningful conversation to, to continue, mm -hmm. there must be a leader. Mm -hmm. there must, because <coughs> you can't talk to faceless people. You can't yeah. talk to masses. Because in, in the masses, not everyone has got the same thing they're fighting for. Yeah. Yeah, because some are fighting for the finance bill. Uh -huh. Some have not even read it. They just fight because it's, it's something that's trending. Because uh -huh. I've met a lot of people that have not even had uh -huh. a piece of that finance bill. Uh -huh. Some are even fighting about things that are rumors uh -huh. in the finance bill, things that are not there. The mm. finance bill. So most of but it them, was cancelled anyway. It's now a story. Yeah, it was cancelled. <laughs> it was cancelled. Yeah. Yes, but you know the fight is still going on. Mm. So, but the, what is now pushing the fight? Because tomorrow you guys have Occupy everywhere. Uh, yeah. Because we thought <laughs> we thought now uh, when the finance bill is cancelled. Yeah. The anger is going to come down. Everybody is going to go back to business. Kilamtoro di kaziake to endele na shugli, but it seems like. In fact, I really think uh -huh. what, what the case is, uh, people just felt that the demonstration really worked. Oh, so the president can really, can really come down and, and, and listen to us. So, ah, kaende kaende. Then, aski mpakazingi nezenye, atu So, I think people are just taking it higher because now they are talking about corrupt leaders. Yeah. Yeah, they want to see governance happening in a good way. The, mm. They also want the, the government to, to, to stream down. The, uh, the, we have so many representatives and, and so many offices that are being budgeted for that are not really necessary. Mm -hmm. Some are just misappropriating funds. So I think people just see that this is now the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So let's just say it all. Let's just mm -hmm. say it all once and for all because we never know if we'll ever get another opportunity to, to address the president. I was sure you're taking the time. Yeah. Okay, there's some non-negotiables. There's a list that was issued. Hopefully you guys also had a chance to. There's a document that was issued. It's dubbed the Generation X, Millennials, Gen Z, and all citizens. Yes. So they're saying these are our non-negotiables and demands to <laughs> the, the three words, hey, let me protect myself. Or <laughs> so, so it's uh, the number one of, for what Gen Z's are demanding. It says, obey all court orders and scrap the illegal and illegitimate CAS positions and public funded offices of the first and the second lady. Another one is they want the housing levy that, uh, of course, it was implemented during this year. Uh, scrap the, <coughs> the, the use the word useless. Uh, housing levy and publish proper audit of how the money has been spent since uh, last year. No, it started last year, not this year, right? Yeah. And the third one is they want all government officials with criminal records and integrity issues, starting with Minthika Linturi mentioned, for the fake fertilizer scandal to be sacked. Uh, there's another one that says reconstitute the IEBC within the next 30 days to facilitate move to recall all rogue members of parliament. In short, but now in a brutal manner. Mm -hmm. Another one says, uh, there are 14, but I'm just going to uh, read the last two. Another one says, employ all JSS teachers to permanent and pensionable term. And then another one in a summer, reduce member of parliament salaries and allowances to be at exactly 200,000 Kenya shillings, so that the rest of the money is diverted to, they're saying, increase salaries of civil servants, restore school feeding program, uh, restore the Mama Linda, in, Mama Linda Mama program, and total scrapping of the, the SHIF, that is the Social Health Insurance Fund, which starts this month to be deducted. And by the way, 
Kenyans are punting with 2.75% of their salaries. So this is some of the non-negotiables. So if you guys are saying if it doesn't implement that, then hashtag Ruto must go. So I don't know, is it part of your belief as well? Do you believe that if he's not listening to those things, then you guys are not backing down? Brian, thank you, Brian. But uh, what I can say from the grievances that you've just read is that uh, not all will be met. But uh, when we now bring this uh, youth and government in a close talk, mm -hmm. let's say now in an ex-space where, where youths want to meet the government, mm -hmm. uh, solution must be, must be there. There must be a way out. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I can promise is that all things that uh, have, been, have been mentioned there mm -hmm. will uh, work for us as youths and uh, for the government as well. So it is, it is a matter of negotiation mm -hmm. and also what is important also is that uh, government, uh, when, when the government was coming up with the, with the, with the finance bill, yeah. uh, I think the best thing that it would have sorted to do was to seek views from the public. Mm -hmm. Because all these things, uh, the, all the riots demonstration that is ongoing by the Gen Z's, eh? is because public views were never, were never taken into consideration. That is why all this are happening. They said they took public opinion. From, from few. Yeah. From few individuals. Mm. Right? Remember they do something called uh, state agencies and lobby groups. Yeah. I think it's provided for under Article 118 from 10 Apple that talks about public participation and then in terms of now, uh, say, targeted state agencies and lobby groups. So they did it, but maybe they should have expanded the bracket. Very true. Right. Yeah, so uh, I think all these things are emanating from that. We, we should uh, pick this issue from that, from that corner. Mm -hmm. So when you see youths coming to greet their member, members of parliament, mm -hmm. uh, it means that uh, they have not been heard. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And uh, th th they came with good intention of just asking their members of parliament why, why they are passing whatever they have not been involved in mm -hmm. you understand mm. and it also it, it, it also shows that uh, w when you see gen z's coming uh, in large number mm -hmm. in cbd to protest or, or, or let me use the term de demonstrate yeah. is because uh, they see the future of the country. Mm. They, can't, they can't just see the country being ruined uh, while they are seeing it because the future belongs to us, the youth. Mm. You understand? Mm. Yeah, so it was a good move and also the government also should consider our views as youth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, in your turn. Um, the irreducible minimums mm -hmm. that the Gen Z's are putting forward mm -hmm. are Maybe some will be met, some might not be dealt with. Mm. Um, and I think people are just skeptical because once beaten to a shine, the trust is gone. People don't really trust the government. Who knows? Maybe the government can just bow down to pressure and, and just fulfill all, the, all of it. But let's just see. Just, just let's just wait and see which ones the mm. government will will really deal with but they are pressing issues kenyans mm. know corruption is a pressing issue mm. uh, politicians just just misappropriating funds and there's nothing happening mm. so people will lose the trust like the mythical Inturi case you know, mm. everybody saw what happened and he was really protected. So people will lose trust with the government. That's why they, they are really pushing harder. Mm. Yeah, the government should not wait for, 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 for people to, to really get that much agitated to, to push extra hard. 
Yeah. Mm. You should just listen to your people, just know how what they want and what really. Mm. Uh, Don't you say it in an angle that maybe the issue is not even the finance bill. The finance bill is in fact somebody was saying it just triggered a mental it's it's like it triggered a certain trauma yeah, and yeah, yeah. everything exploded. Yeah. And so now that it, this finance bill had items and clauses that specifically touched on different people's careers yeah. and they were going to be directly affected, they were like, no, enough is enough. And even in as much as it was announced, cancelled, and the president conceded to it, they still feel oppressed. They feel like if this guy can, you know, the president, not the guy, hey, my mouth, <laughs> the president, if the president can, you know, allow such a bill to be tabled in parliament. And of course, those those uh, members of parliament who approved it, but at first it started off as a conversation to just get to review, like what does subsection of this clause and this clause affect me? And it even touched on matters, content creation, it can touch places, the Gen Z. Yeah. And one of the responses, somebody said, you can't tax a job that I've created, X Siako, TikTok Siako, YouTube Siako. Uh, somebody said, I've been doing it for the last 15 years, then all of a sudden you come up with a bill to tax me. So even the people that you wouldn't expect to be in a demonstration, they are there and they're also on social media and the outrage is a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. So do you guys feel maybe, uh, even it's, the problem is not even the finance bill. They just want the person who is there to exit, maybe, or maybe, I don't know, like how, what will quench the anger? Because you guys tomorrow are going back on the street. I so for tomorrow, what do you want to be heard tomorrow, by the way? Because tomorrow I is hashtag Occupy everywhere. That's what I've seen. I really don't think Ruto must go will really work. Mm -hmm. Because even if he's gone, then what next? Okay. What next? Mm -hmm. You see, we'll still vote the same tribal leaders, the same corruptly maybe things will change the so same round all, all we need uh -huh. is just we don't have to really push ruto out ruto should just listen to what people want uh. if the irreducible minimums are really met the mps and the css the governors everybody will know what to do you know mm -hmm. so moving forward we will have a structure that's working. Mm -hmm. The main thing is coming up with a structure that, that's gonna work for years, okay. you see? Yeah, it's not about removing everyone, then replacing them with the same, mm -hmm. the same type of people, you know? Yeah. yeah, because even if you, 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 you remove Ruto, Ruto must go. The same people that will come to vie for the same presidency are the same known faces, mm. the same money, this, everything the same. Mm. So I think all we need is just a structure that's working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when everyone comes there, they know this is, you, you can never touch this and go scot-free. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Oh, Orlando, before we get uh, there finally, do you feel like there was some sort of betrayal in a sense that, you know, what was said earlier when this, when this uh, leadership was being installed into place, there's some things they said and perhaps this is now 20 months. Uh, there's an ex where they're literally counting from day one since they came into office. It's 20 month plus and this is almost hitting a second year in full. Uh, do you feel like there's some sort of betrayal and that's why you know people said you know what you you tell you told us this and that even in the interview that the convergence interview that happened yesterday they're even playing excerpt video ex excerpts of the campaign trail and comparing to right now the campaign trail and right now do you feel like maybe that betrayal was there in the masses but they were just suppressed and then these are the taxes like the finance bill, uh, the housing levy. Now there's the SHIF that's starting this month. Do you feel like maybe it was just a culmination of a lot? And then what took us you know what? You betrayed us, you told us one, two, three, but you know what? We are, using, we are going to use this point as a place of entry to retaliate. And now the Gen Z's came out and said, you know what? Enough is enough. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I think uh, from the very first beginning that uh, election were, were held, that was 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, as a, fr from the perspective of a po political scientist or a political science student, I can say that 
yes, use of propaganda is something that is always very important in politics or yeah. when, doing, when doing your campaigns. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is a limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when, 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 when you use propaganda, you don't uh, just take advantage and uh, think that everyone now will buy your idea forever mm -hmm. because things change. Yeah, all right, yeah. like giving blanket promises. Yeah. I will buy you a mansion at <laughs> Kilelesho. And once we, you get there, yeah. in then fact, there's no land. Very true, <laughs> which is not even possible because uh, w what the government must understand mm -hmm. uh, as of now is that uh, most of Kenyan population, especially the youth, mm -hmm. are educated. Uh -huh. People have information at hand. Mm -hmm. So when you keep on lying to lying or... Uh, falsifying your promises mm. it becomes uh, an habit and people get used to whatever you are you are you, you are telling them mm. so it brings chaos at the end mm. of the day mm. so what should be done uh, mm. i think with the government uh, is that uh, the moment that, that they introduced this bill to the parliament and uh, it was amended from your own very old point of view what do you think, uh, do you think it is right to tax spread this critical moment that inflation is also with us here? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's right to tax di diapers, buds for, for ladies? Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, there's something that we should just, just resonate around mm -hmm. and uh, give uh, and youths and Kenyans at large uh, mm -hmm. should also have a very humble time hmm, mm. to the government should give its its its, uh, its members ample time and also to think about whatever is going on and also not just come up with things and uh, just to test us mm. it is not good to test kenyans when you test our faith we will come and demonstrate mm. yes and newton lastly uh I, saw, I read somewhere, I think it was a YouTuber in Uganda and another one as well from Kenya who said that this movement has triggered even other countries, the youth of, I think Zimbabwe as well. They're saying they're going to, to demonstrate against another sort of tax as well in their country. And I think there's also Ghana that was mentioned. And they're saying that this Kenya's historical uh, demonstration by the Gen Z's has sent out a signal out there to the world that any other young person that's living in any country where there's some sort of, of political oppression is now time for a rebirth and they're calling it a renaissance. And in that sense, I think there's a grandson of Martin Luther King Jr. I don't know if you guys saw that. He's mm -hmm. in Kenya right now and the daughter as well. Uh, remember he was part of the uh, American Revolution of Black People in the USA before election, before everything, before the blacks were being discriminated against the whites. Martin Luther King Jr., if you're a political scientist, you, sh you should be yeah. having his speech in your eyes. <laughs> so he's in Kenya, as we speak right now. He came, I think, two weeks ago, and they are trying to attribute that to a symbolic renaissance, meaning a rebirth of a new reform and a regime of young people that have a vision of changing previous systems of political oppression, uh, a culmination of you know political orders and aggression so do you, do you guys feel that this gen z movement is going to turn everything around and from now on moving forward anyone who will have to you know make any decision that will directly affect the citizens of the country must first of all be speaking to the people on ground involving them now we've talked of public participation and then finally you know the citizens give him or her an okay too proceed Newton yeah yeah I think the movement that the Gen Z started in in Kenya it's 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 going to to awaken other African nations as well because everybody in Africa in some way or the other has has they've had experience with the with the oppressive governments before yeah, so the gen because even in Kenya, we've always had demonstrations, but the Gen Z's have done it in a way that it has never been done. You see, they've done it in a way that the, the president has, has, really, has really like 
considered talking to them unlike the others because other demonstrations that we've always had you'll always hear the president saying it's political or the criminals and blah 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 but for the gen z's they've really come out and the president is listening to them so even demonstrations that will come past this one will be different because people will always just go away higher and higher and higher yeah. yeah so it will be different things will never be the same this is just the starting point yeah. so even in africa i saw ghana they're planning the same uganda i think it's 26th july they're planning the same so it will just go mm -hmm. in every country you know mm -hmm. some will succeed some maybe their governments will <laughs> will put their their the whatever but mm -hmm. it's a move it's a movement that it's gonna work just like the the revolutions in in europe that we had back in the days the bonapartes and uh, mm. yeah it, it was just from one country to the other to the other the french the what mm. yeah it's a movement so right do you remember when nigeria was going through this period called hashtag end SARS? do you remember yeah yeah, yeah the answers yeah. Yeah. and it's the youth of that country who stood up and said you know what but it was also mad with, poli uh, with police brutality. Yeah. Like, a lot of people were wiped up, young people. And uh, they've also mentioned that like, on some of the historical events that will go down in history, the Kenyan one where you guys, I don't know if you're part of the crew that stormed <laughs> parliament, but of course you wouldn't say even if you are there. <laughs> yeah. People bridging security to storm into a very critical entity of our country's uh, symbolism when it comes to the decisions from the National Assembly to uh, Parliament as well, and the Senate. Uh, they've, they've also attributed it to the war that has been happening in, in Ukraine and how the U.S. as well has been affected directly. So they're mm -hmm. pointing out it's all those young people that have given their voices and their word on what should go and how it should be met. But also when you look at it right now, you know, there's, a, there's been a lot of lives that were lost. Yeah. Um, I happen to be with a friend who was covering for an international space on our website and from my experience on ground that day uh, people came ready to die i remember the police started hurling tear gas canisters at that crowd yeah. and the ladies and the guys who were there they stood there and they told the police just kill us so in short you guys are ready to die so that this formation is stamped and assented into the history of this country forever like how how daring are you personally to take on this journey Thank you, Bram. I think uh, fr uh, from youth perspective... First of all, did you attend any of the demonstrations? I only did once. I, I attended one. Okay. And, and briefly. Like him, briefly. Really, <laughs> and <some Azerudi. laughs> yeah, we attended, I attended one briefly. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is that uh, we don't have problem. Uh -huh. Youth just want the right thing to be done. Okay. Yes. When, when you overtax Kenyans, uh, and expect us also to work. Eh? It means that uh, much is expected from us and uh, less is expected from the government. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, that one must come to, uh, government must realize this and also take some initiatives to make, to ensure that uh, we both benefit, Kenyans and the government as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can't over tax Kenyans, then you, the travel, tra travel, you increase the, sp the spending on your travel. Mm. You understand? Uh, so I think that is not uh, making sense. And the uh, best thing to be done is to just, youth just want the right thing. Mm. Yeah. What about justice for the victims that lost their lives in the protest? Uh, th there's been a discussion, it's, a, it's actually one of the main discussions, the deployment of KDF. Uh, they're saying that the first time it was done was in 1982 when there was an attempted coup d'etat. And I remember the same same Tuesday, uh, CS Defense, that is Eden Dwale, announced the country is under a security state of emergency and so it demanded and called for the intervention of the KDF. On the other side, there was a conversation about, uh, I think it was just a week after that, 
Kenya had this, uh, dispatched 400 uh, soldiers to Haiti to curb the current ongoing war in Haiti that has been there over the years. And the argument is, uh, why can't we curb the argument we have right here first before Baringo. we become experts in curbing other arguments outside there? which the president yesterday said, you know, what, it's well okay, but he defended his, you know, police, like I said, my police will always do what they have to do, whatever they're found in a situation. And he gave an example of Ngong, I believe it was Ngata Rungai, where the police overpowered, no, the crowd overpowered police and, you know, they decided to do the thing. So it means that security agencies are going to be fully present when these protests are happening and if you guys will dare cross that red line, it means you'll have to go, either by the bullet or by whatever the police will, will dispatch that time. So are you ready to bay your blood on, let, let him shoot, I'm here for you. There's even a guy who had a banner, uh, it, it was written on, Mama, just, just in case if I don't come back home, yeah. no, I died to you. I don't remember the other two lines, yeah. yeah. So this is how far young people are willing to go to die for a revolution that maybe some of them will not enjoy. But also when you look at it, the people who fought for independence, they died, right? Yeah. They died so that you guys who were born between 1997 and 2000 are enjoying now. Uh, Kitambo wouldn't even be having this conversation right now on TV. I would be somewhere in a jail trying to beg Jesus to give <laughs> me deliverance, right? But look at the freedom we have of expression. It's in the constitution, right? So uh, what do you make of that? Yeah. You know, since I think last year, September, up to now, we are in 1st July, I've lost around four friends from high school to campus. Mm -hmm. they, just, they just committed suicide because life is not happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life is that hard. Mm -hmm. So imagine me losing four people that I know close mm -hmm. through suicide. Mm -hmm. It means this person can, can, can die in the demonstration as well if he can take his life in a room mm -hmm. because life is hard. Then I think this person can die in the streets fighting for that life to at least come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... I think people are, are, are really ready because at times even the strong, because if four people committed suicide, I'm sure six contemplated. Even though they didn't, but they contemplated. So it means you have like 10 people who are really ready. You know, at times you, you contemplate suicide, then you, you're like, you know, I can't take my life because it's a sin and blah, 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 blah. What if I try and I fail? You know, in real sense, you really want to die, but just the repercussions. What if it fails? Yeah. You know, some people are spiritual. What if I go to heaven and I'm judged for that? So it means this person has got the will to die. Mm. He just doesn't have what to kill him. Mm. So if this so person, they use this as an outlet. yeah 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 because life is hard. So yeah. if you shoot me, well, well, yes. because I couldn't shoot myself. So people are really are are fed up, and uh, mm. yeah, that's why when you see the youths there, you know, I, I I was watching some clips, and you don't believe, like you can't believe somebody doing that. Like <laughs> you're seeing a bullet, you're seeing somebody has been shot there, but you're still going. Mm. It means you're tired. You're tired. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Just, just, just profound, word. Profound. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just word uh, on what uh, <coughs> Newton has said is that uh, I think it is the high. It is high time that uh, government should uh, consider uh, the youths as a very important aspect in this country. Because uh, fr fr from uh, Deputy President's speech, he referred the youth as his children. Yeah, and he's your father. Yes, and he's our father. So mm. is it fair to kill or to shoot or to increase the cost of living to a youth? Is it, is it really fair? 
if government does that. So there's something that we should uh, just look uh, as adults and also as uh, leaders who, who are currently presenting uh, the nation. Uh. Yeah, so it is not fair and uh, government should, I think, should work on that. Mm. Yes. Eventually, all this conversation will end up in a dialogue. And from the outrage is that people don't want a leader because they feel like even previously, from, from even what we've seen, people that were nominated and selected to go represent them, they ended up being compromised. Uh, when I say they were Walipi uh, there's even a, a, a conversation on X where people are saying they should now stop using the church because there's church representatives who are fully compromised. There's some churches that, you know, they even condemned even yesterday, uh, let's say, my Turkey story, Harambes anymore. They don't want, in fact, in one of your demands, is de I think it was for yesterday, deplatforming politicians from speaking in religious setups. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at this conversation and how it's going to end maybe after the outrage has finally died, eventually you'll have to select someone. But people are still adamant saying, we will select someone, but we know they're going to be compromised. And also when you look at, if you're very active on social media, and I believe guys, you, you should be like, your social media should be your first thing when you wake up every day. When, when you look at the people that have been very vocal in, in terms of advocating for, we want justice, reject the finance bill. Some of them have been abducted, they disappeared, and then they were released at some different locations. And after some time, some of them changed tone. Remember in the, in the yesterday's interview, yeah. uh, I think Lena's pushed the question of, are you tone deaf? Meaning that, are you not getting what people are talking on ground? Are you not getting that people hate you? Are you not getting that people want you out of office? Yeah. Tone deaf, right? Yeah. And the people that were advocating for that, the young Gen Z's who have numbers on social media, some of them changed their tone or conduct. Some of you guys, let's come together, ni, 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 yeah. and they even stopped. Yeah. So uh, people are using that as validation to, what if we nominate someone they go there in that NMSF forum. Let me, I'll read it to you in just a bit as you uh, contribute. What if you go there and you're given chai and all of a sudden you change? So in fact now people don't want even leaders anymore. They yeah. want to be faceless, tribeless, you know, leaderless, it political partyless. Yes. Uh, Brian, it is evident uh, just from what, what happened in, in the parliament mm -hmm. that the leaders representing a majority of constituencies all over the country but uh, you hear them from their speech they say that uh, they they were just following orders that is that is what came from our deputy president mm -hmm. speech he said that uh, MPs did what they had to do because mm -hmm. it was order from the government mm -hmm. that can clearly tell you that uh, even when even if we we as youth yeah. nominate or select some of us to go represent us there. Mm. Automatically, our views won't be heard. So it, the, the best way to go uh, to, to face this issue that is affecting us is just us mm. being tribeless, leaderless, mm. and going to face the reality. Yeah, l let me read for you what the president issued on Sunday. No, on Saturday, I believe. Saturday or Friday. So he issued out uh, an address that says, uh, quote unquote, His Excellency the President announced that a national multi sectoral forum dubbed NMSF would be constituted to engage all stakeholders in addressing the concerns raised by the youth. And in that regard, it will facilitate establishment of the national multi sectoral forum and all national umbrella organizations representing the youth, civil society, uh, religious organizations, professional bodies, business community co organizations, academia, student leadership, majority and minority leaders of parliament, the council of governors and other stakeholder groups as requested to nominate representatives to constitute the national steering committee, the NSC of the NMSF. So the national steering committee comprises of 100 persons that should be Gen Z's like you, and they shall be the apex of the organ NMSF that will be in charge of providing a framework for modala modalities, agenda, and timelines for a nationwide dialogue on matters raised by the youth. And these matters, according to the president, include, and they're not limited to as well because it's open, it says jobs and other opportunities that you guys raised, uh, the nation's tax, tax policy, uh, we've just scrapped the finance bill 2024. The president has said 
Kenyans someday will see why the finance bill 2024 was the eat thing. Uh, the national debt burden, public debt, which he also addressed yesterday in his interview. Uh, representation and accountability of leaders, anti-corruption measures and any other agenda items as deemed appropriate. So they want 100 Gen Z's from any other facet, every other facet of, of, of profession, including academia, to be nominated to go represent. And then they shall be your leader. So in return, in response to that, the Gen Z's did a, a, a return memo. And they said, quote, unquote, your request to nominate representatives to constitute the National Steering Committee of the NMSF, and quote, unquote, in our national address in the past two weeks, we, the Gen Z movement, have announced to you and the world that we needed the Finance Bill 2024 scrapped completely and that you must resign. This was the response. So upon the receipt of your request to nominate representatives to constitute the National Steering Committee, the NSC of the NMSF, this is to notify you that we decline your request. And our demands are attached in the appendix below. Or optionally, this is what the Gen Z movement said. Optionally, you could come out on Tuesday at Dedan Kimathi Monument, where we shall serve you with a hard copy. And then he says, signed by the Gen Z movement, press release. So when all these invitations to have dialogue and representation as the president has initiated, why can't just people come down and say, you know what? So let's come for finance bill, Imetosha. Imetosha, Jameni, Imetosha. Uh, but still tomorrow you guys are hitting the streets. In fact, they're saying it's, it's occupied everywhere now. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, what we need as youth, it is not about Gen Z's because it is something that is affecting Kenyans. Gen Z's are just a, a group of people or young people representing the whole nation at large because uh, we've tried with the opposition and op opposition has also gave it its best. But now uh, we, we can just narrow it down to Gen Z's alone. Yeah. Yeah, it is something that uh, uh, Gen Z's are just representative of what, what, whatever is going on in the country, all over the country. Yeah. So what as we can say is, uh, what we can say from youth perspective is that uh, we need to be given the freedom to think, freedom to air out what we have and not to fear anyone. Because when we talk, our views are hard. Mm -hmm. And in return, good things are being, uh, will be done to the country at large, not just the Gen Z's alone. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, the best approach uh, that we should uh, employ is to ensure that uh, youths are hard. Police also should not be brutal to us. Mm -hmm. I appreciate some of the, po of, the, of the police that have been there with us. Some of them have been very friendly, and we really appreciate that. Uh, what we need is just freedom to think mm -hmm. and to air out what, what we have. Yes, uh, Nito. Mm, what I can say <coughs> right now about the Gen Z's, Gen Z's are not really representing Gen Z's. Mm -hmm. They are representing the whole country just as Vincent has said, uh, the situation here is, uh, you remember the older dads, like the rats are together, then the cat is there, but they really know, they really want to know who will bell the cat, who will take that bell, put it on the cat's neck. So whenever the cat is coming, mm -hmm. we are aware. So who will bell the cat? Then the whole nation was like, who will bell the cat? Mm. Then Gen Z decided, okay, we'll take it. You see? Mm. So it's not about Gen Z's. I think it's about the whole country because even as you, uh, as you saw, Occupy Parliament, the Occupy millennials attempt were there. to occupy State House. Uh, the, 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 the attempt to occupy yeah, State so House. It was Occupy Parliament and then the next day was Occupy State House. Yeah, though it didn't happen mm -hmm. as the, the, the one. But it was part of the plan. It, it was part of the plan. Exactly. But as you could see, 
those demonstrating were not only Gen Zs. Mm -hmm. Everyone was there. Yeah. yeah, everyone was there. The Generation X, the Millennials, everyone was there. So people just needed the Gen Z to bend, to bail the cut. Okay. Then let's go. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, finance bill was just okay. Who will bail the cut? Where, where, where's the trigger? Where's the trigger? Mm -hmm. You know, everything is pressing, but where's the trigger? So mm -hmm. finally, the finance bill was just a. Uh, a, a, a matchstick to mm. put to put to, to, to light to, up the to fire. light up the fire. So right. the fire is now burning. It's no longer about the the matchstick. Mm. It's the fire. Uh, the the president should just listen to the ground as the deputy keeps on saying. Me now a kaga maskio kwa kwa ground. <laughs> yeah. So the president should just listen. Oh. Yeah, he shouldn't have the, the hard stances. The, the, the Gen Z's also should not operate as anonymous hackers. You know, the anonymous mm. hackers, they are faceless, they are leaderless. You know, mm. it, it's making the, the whole process harder. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. making the whole process harder. Okay. But again, mm -hmm. the, the, the Gen Z's, maybe they don't want to present the leaders because the mm. government also, you know, the government monopolizes mm. terror. So, you know, okay, yeah, from like what we just experienced yeah. from independence here today. Yeah. So, we have to go because we are out of time. It's exactly okay. 9 59. Uh, do you have a social media? Just one you can mention, Moja. Yes, yeah, the one you're active on. One uh, that is Facebook at Vincent Orlando. Mm -hmm. Yours, um, True Boy Newton, Facebook. All right, so, so yeah. and thank you guys for coming through. You're welcome, thank you. All right, that's what we say. Thank you for watching today. Well, definitely. All right, it's been uh, Isaac Newton, political scientist. Uh, he said he finished studying the course and then alongside Vincent Orlando, still pursuing the same course, right, at the yes. University of Nairobi. All right, thank you, guys. And we say thank you so much for watching. We'll definitely see you tomorrow for uh, Innovations and uh, Entrepreneurship Tuesday. My good name is Brian Sanko. We'll see you tomorrow bright and early right here.